have the final presentation before the lunch, but it's a cracker, and it's Javois Mining, their CEO, Bryce Crocker. Uh, my name's Bryce Crocker. Uh, I was one of the early or founding executives at Extrata. Stayed with the company until we sold to Glencore. I was based in the nickel business when we took over Falconbridge, and so my background's nickel cobalt, been in the commodity a long time. For most of my career, no one really cared that I knew a little about cobalt, and that started to change probably three or four years ago as people started to look at battery technologies, chemistries, etc. Uh, so I was asked to take a look at Nico Young and looked at it, and I brought on a couple of other individuals who I'd been working with with private equity, Brian Kennedy, Michael Rodriguez. So I guess it's a bit of the usual suspects with a group of ex Extrata, Glencore, WMC Resources, Lion Ore executives who are together and uh, looking to do something a little different from our peers. We're focused on getting into production as fast as we can. We're focused on low capex, low technical risk. Because of our background, particularly at Maran Maran, I was at Maran Maran in November uh, last year, and it's the first time I've visited site that it's been operating at capacity. So that's 15 years after it started. So because we've got the first-hand operational experience at Maran, Michael Rodriguez was operations director for 10 years, Brian Kennedy ran the site. We fully understand the challenges and the capital risk, the commissioning risk, the financing risk, the technical risk associated with HPL flow sheets. Um, at Murren, they operated a heap leach. Ran for seven years, was a commercial success. Got their operating costs under $3 a pound nickel at a time when cobalt byproduct was around eight bucks. So. We're focused on heap leach at Nico Young. Now, clearly, it doesn't work for all lateritic ore bodies, otherwise no one would be building autoclaves. Uh, but what we've seen at Nico Young, when we took a look in September last year, has only been confirmed and accentuated since as we're moving through. And we believe that we can construct a heap leach here for a fraction of what the... Um, for a fraction of what CapEx would be for a... Uh, for a high pressure acid leach flow sheet. And uh, in a vastly accelerated time frame. The challenge with HPAL is you've got, for a multi-billion dollar project, you have one year financing, three year construction, three year commissioning. Uh, you can miss the cycle by the time uh, by the time you come on. With heap leach, I think we're going to be the first project in the production in Eastern Australia. And I think once that's more broadly recognised, we move through studies, then we'll see uh, an equity re-rating commensurately. I guess the other point I'd start by opening is there's a big focus on offtake. We will not lock up offtake. Offtake is bad. There's only three reasons you lock up offtake. A, you don't believe the thematic of nickel or cobalt, which I don't think applies to many people who understand uh, what's going to happen. B, you need it for financing. Or C, you don't have the organisational capacity to execute and build a project yourself. Because we're, we've got an owner's team that has the capacity to execute our project, it's a fraction of the capex, we need no offtake. If you give me, we're going to produce what's called a mixed hydroxide product. Uh, readily tradable, um, there's uh, because of our background within Glencore Extrata, trading the product ourselves, uh, it's, it's an acceptable product in probably 10, 15 facilities in the Western world and more than that in China today. Um, so again, I think that the focus in terms of the, the prevalence of offtake, and I, when I go out and talk to investors, I say, well, how you play this thematic in my mind is open register, or open offtake. Because I'm not sure what's going to happen. There's a capacity, I guess, of Glencore with the uh, reintroduction of Katanga on the cobalt side to bring back on a 40,000 tonne project into a 110,000 tonne market. It's like OPEC overnight. It's reflective of how strong the outlook is for cobalt that the prices in physical price and physical markets aren't being compressed associated with that. But we just think that once you look beyond that, I've never seen a commodity outlook as strong as it is thematically for cobalt. Uh, there's a structural deficit. It's just a question as to what's going to happen when that structural deficit comes into play and how we're going to take leverage that is to be in production. So that's our strategy. Uh, in terms of the organisation, we've got, we're going to end the year with over $20 million in cash. So we're essentially funded absent acquisitions all the way through to construction. I guess, Nico Young, logistics matters in this business. And if I kind of benchmark it to Murren, because Murren's a comparative project that I guess we know well. We're 300k from uh, existing co uh, right, uh, port outlets at Port Kembla. Murren was 1,000. Uh, Murren is 80 kilometres from railhead. We're 12. Um, so logistics matters in mining. Uh, 
We're 25 kilometres from Young, and I guess over the years I've looked at nearly every nickel, pretty much every nickel cobalt laterite deposit, and most of them you're either, uh, there's jungle, you're, there's primates you're trying to chase away, you've got massive infrastructural issues. With here, you, uh, the workforce challenges you have in countries like Philippines, Brazil, PNG, Madagascar, uh, it's, a, it's a lovely place, as you can see on the photo here. Rolling hills, rolling farmland, Young's a town of 7,000 people. 25 kilometres, we're far enough away so that people can drive to site and then uh, drive back, so we don't have a FIFO workforce, but equally we're close enough that we don't have the issues with noise, etc., um, associated with a mining facility. Two, or, two deposits, Ardenary and Thadungra. I'll skip through. In terms of the broader resource, uh, we've got 170 million tonne at 0 0.6, 0 0.06, at 0.6 cent nickel equivalent cutoff. Raising the cutoff, because if you're building a multi-billion dollar HPL plant, you need 3 million, 4 million tonne per year, so you need a 100 million tonne resource. We're focused on a million tonne to start. So again, raising the cutoff, uh, 42 million tonne, 0 0.8, 0 0.09. Looking at it on a cobalt basis, so instead of nickel wireframes, because it's essentially one to one, at spot cobalt prices, it's actually more cobalt revenue than nickel. Uh, I guess the numbers that I'd ex draw out here is 0.05 cobalt cutoff, you've got 100 million tonne at 0 0.6, 0 0.08. Again, raising the cutoff to try and delineate a higher grade, shallower core where we can get into production early. Uh, 0 .30, 30 to 35 million tonne, 0 0.66, 0 0.12. So we're starting to get up to the cobalt grades, which are kind of interesting. Uh, this is really why we joined Jevois. On the y-axis, you've got cobalt grade equivalent. On the x-axis, contained cobalt equivalent. Blue are sulphides, yellow laterites, size of the bubbles market cap. So we're the small orange bubble amongst the big yellow bubbles. In terms of the quality of the resource, it's essentially similar. I mean, I have a, a very similar resource to Syston, to the old Black Grange deposit, which has obviously been rebadged. Uh, but the quality of the resource is not that distinct. And I guess drawing out more specifically to some of the other deposits in Australia that we compared to, I've highlighted you have the mineral resource, contained cobalt equivalent, cobalt equivalent grade enterprise value. And obviously we're significantly undervalued relative to where our peers are. And as I said, I think the difference is in terms of the speed of how we're moving forwards, where PFS, end of September this year, delivery, move forwards into DFS and environmental permitting. We're anticipating that late 2019. We've got a four to five month construction timeframes on the pads. We start leaching immediately. Uh, 150 day cycle time probably on the pads. We can construct the precipitation tanks simultaneously. So we're anticipating commercial production end of 2020, which is actually ahead of any of the other projects. Uh, just moving through quickly, because uh, I do have the timer there, I guess, Junior companies typically aren't organisationally set up to execute projects. Um, I haven't attached names here, but you've got the advisors, but it's kind of, uh, as I said, a bit of the usual suspects, all uh, largely ex extrata Glencore executives, big part of the contingent from Murrin Murrin, um, people who've done the work there. Hydro Geosense did the agglomeration testing for Murrin, SGS Bateman, when we did the columns for Murrin, that was set up at SGS in Perth. Mining Plus is an executive ex extrata Glencore. Um, more M Works, again, that was the that's essentially the ex VP of projects from Manara. Um, so we've essentially got the the same team that's operated the only commercial outside of China, uh, the only commercial uh, heap leach facility. And I guess just to move, we as I said, we're we're focused on trying to get into production as fast as we can. Uh, we've purchased some secondhand equipment, um, stackers conveyors, agglomerators uh, from Fox Resources and we're moving forwards to assess how we relocate this to site in order to facilitate that as part of the introduction of the DFS. Uh, we also have some non-core assets that we're moving through and selling, a royalty portfolio that we're also finalising the sale for. Uh, and so I guess in a nutshell, that's Jevois. I think that the, we are massive believers in the thematic and how just to reiterate how we want to play the thematic is get it in production, get into generating real cash flow. Um, and I think that's really how you can generate significant value for what I think is a very, very positive outlook for both nickel and cobalt. Thank you.
Thank you very much, uh, Bryce. And that brings us neatly through to the lunch break. Uh, be back at uh, 2 o'clock. We've got some food outside for you, but be back at 2 o'clock to hear uh, a presentation from Cathy Moises, who's the head of research at Patterson Securities, looking at the ASX markets, how they're doing. This afternoon, we've got a gold panel for you and a battery materials panel, plus the drinks at 5.15. So enjoy your lunch. Thanks. <laughs>